Right. I have a confession to make. Every day I work on the dark side of the matter, helping ruthless corporations apply behavioral science and make you purchase products you don't really want in quantities you absolutely do not need for the money you probably don't have to impress people you don't really like. But I came here today to show you how you can use behavioral science in your favor. Hopefully, after those few minutes, you're going to get away with three easy ways, and those will help you to be better at things I also struggle, like losing weight, saving money, and achieving your goals. And the funny thing is that all you need is actually just a single Polish latte. Does it sound appealing for you? So, like, who of you thinks that you're a rational person? Just raise your hand. Okay, we have few rational people, that's good. Well, I also thought that I'm a rational person, but then I, I thought like, hmm, I had actually two car crashes just because I was playing with my phone. I spent sometimes really extensive hours on social media. I don't know how about you, but I have plenty of clothes I bought I absolutely do not need. And if any of those stories are familiar with you, then maybe you're just an ordinary human being as I am. So let me bring those three stories. The first one is about practicing. I want to bring a story from my life. It was back in 2007, 2008. Back then, I was working in a huge multinational corporation. And like, I knew a lot about nutrition. And I had the most you know, prestigious membership at the gym. And I simply wanted to be fit and just look healthy. So how would I look like that? That's me 50 kilos more than I am today. Well, I had all the necessary tools and skills, but for some reason I couldn't apply those. And, but luckily, I managed to get to this. This is me finishing one of my Ironman races. So how did I do it? I knew that I had to train, but I needed a little bit of more push, like a nudge. So I signed a contract with myself, a contract that would force me to exercise. The contract went like this. I would go to the gym four times a week. And for every time I wouldn't go, I had something like a donation box. So this was a donation box. And like in the donation box, for every time I wouldn't go to the gym, I would put $100. And then at the end of the month, I would take those money and then send it to a charity foundation of a political party I'm not really a fan of. Like, believe me, I would just do anything to go and exercise, not to lose my precious money and to send it to those guys. So, like, this is my first story about practicing. The second is about just looking, using your vision. And for this, I just want to show to you how your eyes work. Uh, for those who cannot see this, I have it on a slide. So if you look at those two squares, who of you sees those as being the same color? If you see those the same color, you should see, see your GP, because you have problems with your vision for sure. You shouldn't see those as the same color. But with this piece of paper, I'm going to prove to you that they're actually the same color. They're absolutely the same color. But now I'm going to show you to unsee it. Oops, I'm not going to show you. But believe me that if I remove this one, the the, the, you see those as a different color. Why is that? Because we cannot judge things just you know, in absolute terms. We can only judge those in comparisons. So we use this to make you purchase products you don't really want. I will give you an example from a project we did for a coffee chain. We had like two coffee sizes. One was a small one, $3, the big one, $7. 
And the rational went like this. I don't need a big coffee. You know, the big is really like huge, half a liter. And I don't need that much caffeine. And I would have to pay more than double the price of a small one to get the big one. Makes sense, right? And then what we did, we introduced a third option. A third option we call a decoy. And this one sound like looks pretty stupid, you know? You have a middle option for six bucks. But do you think it affects the preferences of the people, of all those rational human beings? Well, actually, it did significantly. So just imagine how often do you go to the movies with this huge jar of Coke, done sipping, you know, just then you need to go to pee, but then you bought the huge one because you only had to pay extra two zlotys or one dollar to get the big one. What I want to encourage you to do is to select N not to optimize the selection of the choice that I gave you, because I gave you a selection that prones you to select the products I want you to buy. Just select the one you actually need. And if a small coffee is just enough for you, just go for the small one. Don't force yourself to get all this you know, extra caffeine. It's not healthy for you. So that's story number two. And story number three. Uh, we had those interesting presentations on getting out of your comfort zone. And just to prove to you that sometimes, you know, we are not so prone to get off your comfort zone, I want to play a little game with you. The game is pretty simple. You can get 20 slotters. It's the end of the game. Or we can toss a coin, and if you win, you get 50. If you lose, you get nothing. Who of you would play the game with me? OK, we have a few volunteers. But I'm surprised that you, know, you should all raise your hands. Because like in this game, you can only win. What I did is I made a little survey among you before. And here are the results. Like most of you would play the game with me. Makes sense. This is the rational decision. But still, there is 60% that would either take the safe option or would just say, I don't want to play. Maybe I look like a crook, you know, or you were just, you know, you were still sleepy, not having your first morning coffee. But still, there is a huge group of those who wouldn't play. And the whole theme today is about, you know, men and women, and who's more prone to make those good decisions. And what would be your guess? Well, I was so surprised, gentlemen, that we are so risk averse. And really, congratulations to the women. So, gentlemen, use your alpha male skills, and girls, keep on doing. Thank you very much indeed. Those were the three choices. <laughs>